Hello, this is Daniel March, and today I'm going to be doing another review. This time around, I'm going to be doing a review for episode 7 of season 1 of True Detective After You've Gone. So, season 2, I actually didn't realize this, but it's actually going to start, uh, start off this weekend. So, I'm going to, so I've, and I've already um, watched True Detective season 1 like five times already. Um, I don't know why, why it's taken me so long to actually review it. Um, but yeah, now that I'm on summer vacation, I'm going to catch up on all the TV show reviews. I need to do, um, which is True Detective, Scorpion, finish that shit up, Flash, and Arrow, and yeah, so, True Detective, after you've gone, um, episode 7, season 1, um, so yeah, before I begin though, 10 seconds, spoiler warning, as usual, for those who have yet to actually watch the episode I haven't already, um, stop the video, go check it out, and come back and watch the rest of this review, 10 seconds, spoiler warning, as usual, starting now. Okay, so 10 seconds are up, so for those who have yet to actually watch the episode of Hamlet already, please don't comment down below, be messaging me, that never gave you a fair warning, because as usual, I did. So as usual, quick synopsis, likes and dislikes, and then the rate. So basically, we're in the current, present timeline, 2012, and basically, Cole basically gives Hart um, evidence of a cult which he believes is responsible for the, di for, um, the disappearance of these women and children that has been happening lately. And among the and among this evidence, there's a videotape of um the rape and murder of this lady or person called Marie Fontenot. Fontenot, um, yeah, and we've seen this tape more kind of um already before um in the Tuttle's home, which is where Cole took it. Um, um, so yeah, he denies killing Tuttle, I guess, to some degree. Um, that makes sense. Um. And, and, bas and he basically um, said, gives this explanation, saying that the reason Toto was killed. First off, he says he didn't kill. Um, he didn't kill Cole. Says that he didn't kill Toto. He then goes on to say that the reason he was killed, um, or the reason he was found dead, killed, is because he was um, it was to prevent blackmail over the tape. And after that, after all that bullshit, Hart decides to continue the investigation, and they realize. And through their, their investigation, they realize that Tuttle has um, an illegitimate, um, I guess that's the word, or legal, I guess, not illegal, ele illegitimate, I guess, um, whatever, half brother with the, with, who's called Ch Childress, or Childress, how you pronounce it. Um, and basically, this guy is now primary suspect number one. Um, primary suspect number one, because he has scars all over his face, like, Boom, 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 like scars. Um, they also learned that their former colleague, Steve Gar Garaki, um, cut short the investigation of the Fontenot disappearance um, on the order of his boss. Basically, he's a guy that Hart, um, I'm, I'm not mistaken, he's a guy Hart later went on with the, to the boat and went fishing off for a couple minutes. Um, Childress then, um, yeah, so basically, Garaki cut short his investigation on the Fontenot disappearance. On the orders of his boss, Ted Childress, then the sheriff of the Vermilion Parish. Um, I believe is how they explained it. Um, so and then you have Hart and Cole. Um, and wait, um, they basically get Garrick to con. Um, basically they get him to. Um, ba they basically convince him to get. Um, they get the two of them, Hart and Cole, get Garrick. Um, to spill out the beans on what on what happened during this whole investigation. Meanwhile, you also have um, Gilbo and Papani, um, which are, which are, are the two black people, basically, um, black detective, um, whatever. Um, they ask um directions to this burnt out church, which we have seen also throughout the series. Um, and then the man co um call the characters in the light of the way um in the light way academy in 1995. Um, how, uh, that came out wrong, but um. The the two okay the two other detectives uh, Papani uh, and Gilbert uh, they're trying to find this burnt down church uh, and they, they they try to find they find this burnt out church the person they ask is the same person that Cole encountered encountered back in 1995 um, light of the way apparently that's how it's worded here um, which I didn't because I, I know I realized the guy looked somewhat familiar familiar. Um, he looks somewhat familiar, 
and, and then I, uh, he looked weird. He looked he looked weird in two reasons, and then I kind of added to it too. He looked somewhat familiar because we have seen him one one other episode, if I'm not mistaken. I, don't quote me on that, but we, we have seen him in another episode. The major thing is he has the scarred he has the scarred face, which is who who um, was being looked for throughout this whole episode. This guy with the scarred face is the person that. And that the audience and the characters were trying to look for throughout this whole episode. So it's pretty interesting how they kind of um, tied it back in that way. Um, and how they also, how he was also somewhat introduced in the previous episode. Um, cameo type of thing. So that's pretty cool. Um, so yeah. Overall, that was a pretty good episode. Um, um, how do you say, uh, the second to last episode of the season, I thought it was actually pretty good. Pretty good setup to what's, um, to episode 8, uh, which is Forma, Forman Void. Uh, I thought it was actually a pretty good setup to it. Um, looks like there's going to be some pretty good stuff going on. And I really do want to, and I really do want to know what's going to happen with this guy with scars um, and who he is. I mean, I don't think we're going to get really deep, deep. I mean, as the show is, I think we are going to learn a bit of his backstory, but I don't think we're going to get really in too deep with his with his character. So yeah, I mean, overall, it is a really well written show, and and you do have and you have some great acting again, Matthew McConaughey. Um, and Woody Harrelson, great actors in my opinion, and, <clears throat> and yeah, and overall, I think it was, you know, really well acted, I mean, if anything, I, I feel like in these last three episodes, episode six, seven, and eight, uh, money six and seven, because I haven't seen, uh, yeah, six and seven and eight, um, how do you say, it? I feel like they were overacting a bit, in my opinion, at times, but overall, it's still pretty good, um, so yeah, so I mean, I did want to know what happened to the guy with the lower, with the scars at the end, which I mean, I le and later did find out what happened to him in episode eight. But I'm not gonna spoil anything of it if you guys haven't seen it yet. Um, so yeah, I mean, overall, I think it's a pretty great uh, second to last episode. Really did enjoy it, and I mean, yeah, I mean, overall, it's pretty great. And again, really well written, really well um, acted. I mean, it does have that thriller aspect. And I really do like the detective work throughout the episode. So yeah, overall, really great episode. I'm um, gonna scale it one to ten. One be the worst. Ten be the best, and six be decent. I give it an eight out of ten. Really great. Um, second to last episode. Um, I'm I'm thinking. I know there's a word for it. I I know the word in Spanish. I can't. I can't think of it in English. Um, um, uh, whatever. Never mind. So yeah, eight out of ten is what I'd give this episode. Um, after you've gone episode seven, season one, True Detective. And yeah, that's basically it for this review. Subscribe if you're not already subscribed. I do movie reviews, TV show reviews, and comic book reviews. Um, aside from that, like the video, share on Facebook, Twitter, MySpace, or whatever you guys prefer. And that's basically it for now. This is Daniel Mart signing off.